Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I have a video for you all about fitting the Vogue V8772 blouse. I'm wearing it right now and I've got another version that I've made too, so I'm going to quickly show you those versions and talk you through the process of fitting them. So I'm going to show you my twirls and then I'm going to talk you through the adjustments that I made and finally show you the pattern pieces kind of before and after I've adjusted them. So firstly, the pattern. This is the pattern, it is the Vogue V8772 blouse and it's a great pattern because you get a lot of bang for your buck. You've got a pussy bow blouse, a blouse with a proper collar, short sleeve, long sleeve, tunic length, no sleeves, three quarter length sleeves. It's got lots of options in this one pattern. I've made two versions of this pattern so far. I've made this version that I'm wearing now. This fabric is a lovely, really soft, really delicate tensile fabric from Meat Milk, and I bought it from Lamazi Fabrics. Um, I made view B with this fabric, which is the Pussy Bow Blouse version, as you can see. But I've also done a hack on the sleeves to add a full billowy bishop sleeve. So I'll step back a bit so you can see the sleeves in action. The fabric is really quite sheer, um, so I have to be careful what I wear underneath, but other than that, I'm really happy with this version. The next version that I've made is View D. So this is the kind of standard blouse version that I've just left it with the normal sleeves this time. It's got a collar and a collar stand, buttons down the front, but I actually lengthened this one to make it more of a tunic length so that it covers my bum. The first thing to think about with regards to fitting and sizing when making a new pattern is the size. So which size you're going to start with for your first twirls and to then make pattern adjustments from. I've learned that the best way to approach choosing the size of a garment that's based on kind of the upper part of your body, so a blouse, a top, a dress, is to think about your high bust measurement. Now it doesn't usually give it on the back of the packet, but if your pattern is drafted to a dressmaker's B cup, then the high bust measurement will be two inches smaller than your bust measurement. So what I literally do on the back of my packets or in my instruction booklet is I take a pencil and I write down the high bust measurements by subtracting two inches from the bust measurement. But as I said, go and watch my other videos if you want to hear me discuss that in more detail. This pattern, I believe, is drafted to a dressmaker's B cup, but it was quite hard to find that out online. It's not really clear. It come, this pattern comes in two different size ranges by the look of it, because on the back it says it's got combination A5, size 6 to 14, and combination E5, size 14 to 22, but it's not really clear what the A5 and E5 means. I don't think it will be drafted to an A cup and an E cup, because that's just quite unusual. So I kind of assumed this was drafted to a B cup, but I'll put some recess resources in the description box below with some blog posts that talk about which um, pattern companies draft to which dressmaker's cup size. So my dressmaker's cup size is a double zero because my high bust measurement and my full bust measurement are the same. They don't have that two inch difference. That means I know I basically always have to do a small bust adjustment. If your full bust is more than two inches bigger than your high bust, then you probably have to do a full bust adjustment. So my measurements led me to believe that I needed to make a size 10 and then do my small bust adjustment because my high bust measurement is most closely aligned with the size 10 high bust measurement in the pattern. However, I went a little bit rogue with this one and I actually decided to make the size eight for my first twirl. The reason being is that I know that these patterns, so the big four patterns, Vogue, Simplicity, Butterick, McCall's, often are really, really generous with ease. I prefer my garments to be slightly um, sort of tighter fitting rather than looser fitting generally, so I actually decided to um, make a size eight for my first twirl, including the small bust adjustment. So I'm going to put that first twirl garment on now and show you what the result was. Here is twirl number one. I've not done up the pussy blow because I want to show you some details a bit closer. 
So this is the size eight with the one inch small bust adjustment. And I decided that this gave me a pretty good fit across the bust. The darts are in pretty much the right place and there's not too much extra fabric. So there's plenty of room because it's not supposed to be a super, you know, skin tight blouse, but I thought that gave me a pretty good fit this way. In terms of the sleeves, I only made one sleeve to save on my twirling fabric um, because, you know, as long as you can kind of get a sense of where the shoulder seams are going to fit, you don't really necessarily need to do both sleeves. From doing this sleeve, I decided that I wanted a little bit more range of movement in the arm here. And one of the ways you can do that is actually to raise the armhole up so that this seam is a bit closer into my armpit and that would give a wider range of movement. So that's one of the adjustments that I decided to make. In terms of general fit, I was really pleased just with the shape of it and how the sort of lower portion of these darts are and from behind as well. I think it gives a pretty good fit. I didn't feel the need to adjust anything on the back. Across the back I felt that there was plenty of fabric here for me to have range of movement and I didn't think that it was going to be too tight across my back so that was good. If I'd have had any concerns with that, with kind of the size across my back, it might have been better to put a sleeve on even if just a short sleeve because then you can kind of really see how much fabric you've got kind of to be able to put your arms forward. But I could kind of get a sense from this that I thought there was enough room. The other element of the fit I wanted to assess was the sleeve. Now actually, with hindsight, I think I could have taken a little bit of length out of the sleeve because I think it is a tiny bit too long for me. But what this sleeve did show me was that I didn't want to just leave it as a, as a white, as a straight sleeve. I thought I wanted to do something a little bit more exciting with it, particularly because white is not usually my colour. I wanted to make it a bit more of a statement blouse just rather than just a simple white blouse. So I decided this sleeve was too boring, I wanted to make a big puffy bishop sleeve, but in order to give it a really good contrast between my wrist and the fullness of the sleeve, I decided that I would need to make the, coll uh, the collar, I keep calling this the collar, I mean the cuff. I've got quite a bit of excess in the cuff here, so I decided that I wanted to make the cuff a little bit smaller so that it would be tighter on my wrist and therefore the billowiness of the bishop sleeve would be more obvious, it'd be more of a contrast. So the outcome of this toile was for me to decide that my one inch small bust adjustment was good to go, that's enough. Um, I decided that I needed to make the cuff smaller, to hack the sleeve into something more exciting and to raise the armhole. I decided to raise it by a centimetre. So all of my adjustments that still needed to be made pretty much, well, they just related to the sleeve. So I actually just twirled the sleeve again. Um, again, it was really a really good opportunity to practice my um, lapped cuff technique because that was quite tricky. Um, and yeah, I made the mistake of making another left sleeve. If I'd have made this as the right sleeve, then I could have attached it and I could have had two sleeves to compare. Um, but I'll have to just hold it up to show you. In fact, I could put my arm in it, couldn't I? It's not the right side, but it will give you an idea. So I'd made my cuff narrower, so I knew that that was going to be much better to have a contrast between the cuff and the puffy sleeve. But I also decided that this first sleeve that I had hacked, so I'll show you this in the next section of this video, I'll show you the pattern pieces, I decided that this wasn't enough drama, not enough volume in the sleeve, I wanted more. If I pin this together you can see hopefully a bit better how much volume we're talking here. That's the amount of volume that we're talking. I decided I wanted to go bigger. So the result of this twirl sleeve was that I needed to add even more volume to the belt sleeve. So that was my second twirl. That was the end of my twirling process. It was, so it was actually pretty straightforward with this one. If I still had some fit issues on the bodice, then I would have made more pattern adjustments and then done a second twirl of like the full bodice. But actually I didn't need to and I was confident that I could make the adjustment that I wanted to to the sleeve and then just go for it with the main fabric. So I didn't twirl the sleeve again. 
So now that I've shown you my toiles and I've talked you through what I did, I'm going to show you the pattern pieces so that you can get a bit more of a sense of what this meant, what these little tweaks and changes meant in terms of the actual paper pattern pieces. These are my front and back pieces of the Vogue V8772 and I want to show you the alterations that I made to the pattern pieces to raise the armholes. Now, I raised the armhole on each side by one centimetre and what that means is that I took this curve, so the original curve is here in orange, and I added one centimetre up the side and then connected the curves. So here again, the orange is the original curve of the armhole. I raised it at the edge by one centimetre and then completed the curve. The other adjustments that I made to the bodice were the full bust adjustment. Now, I'm not going to do a full tutorial on that, but what you end up doing is taking this section of the bodice and moving it inwards and upwards. This meant that I actually ended up lowering the apex again. So when you do a small bust adjustment, the dart moves in and up, but that obviously moves your apex point up and I didn't need the apex to be any higher. So I cut around this dart and moved it down again. And that's what these two pattern pieces look like. For the second version that I made in the leopard print, you'll see that I extended the pattern pieces to give it a longer look. I did realise that I actually could have used the original pattern pieces because the original pattern pieces do include a version with a tunic length. But doing it myself meant that I could customise it to the exact length that I wanted. Next, I'm going to show you the sleeve pieces because, as you know, I did my bishop sleeve hack. So I've actually got four different versions of the pattern piece here and I'm going to show you them all. First up is the blue pattern piece. This is the original pattern piece for the size 8. You will see that I've raised the armholes on the sleeve pieces in exactly the same way that I did on the bodice front and the bodice back pieces. So all of the armholes pieces have been raised by one centimetre. You'll see a green line here. Now, I actually took a sliver off of the arm because I needed it to match the cuff. So you will see that I have made this cuff narrower in order to have it tighter around my wrist. And you can see the piece that's sort of disappeared here. So what I did was cut down the middle, overlap by the amount that I wanted to take out and then stick it back down again. This didn't matter for my bishop sleeve hack because the bishop sleeve hack involves gathering the volume of the sleeve together, but it meant that my sleeve piece was then too big for my cuff when I came to make my leopard print version with the ordinary sleeve. So I took two centimetres off of the side of the sleeve and just graded it off at the side there so that this piece now matches the cuff piece. In order to do my bishop sleeve hack, I needed to trace off another version of this pattern piece that I could cut up and play around with. So this is the original piece in blue. This is the next piece in orange. That was my piece that I used to play around with. So the way that you do a bishop sleeve hack is by creating some lines, some vertical lines parallel to the grain line from the hem of your sleeve up to the seam allowance on the sleeve curve. So I've done one line up the middle to the seam allowance. So I've done a dotted line around here to show my 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. I've done another line here up to meet this notch and another line here up to meet the other notch. It's best to keep these lines within the notches if you can. What this now allows me to do is to spread out these pieces. So I can spread these to my heart's content until I feel like I've got enough volume. Once you're happy with the spacing and you think you might have given yourself enough volume, you can either stick some scrap pieces of paper behind or on top to fill these gaps and then neaten off this edge here, or you can actually just trace off a whole nother pattern piece. I've traced off another piece. So this green piece is the piece that I used to twirl the sleeve. So do you remember I just showed you my one armed twirl with this blue pattern piece. Then I showed you my one extra sleeve twirl that I put on that was using this green pattern piece. And I decided it wasn't enough. So I went back to the drawing board 
by drawing board I mean this orange piece and I spread these out even further and I traced off this red piece. So you can see I've added even more space here and it's just a really big sleeve piece now. I'll compare this to the original piece. So that's how much extra volume I've added compared to the original piece. And this is what allowed me to get that big billowing, almost kind of pirate-esque sleeve that I'm really a big fan of. So there you have it. I thought I'd put on my leopard print view D version to sign off this video. And I thought I'd just put in a few pictures of both of the finished garments to remind you of how they looked in the end once they were both finished. And just as a reminder, the pattern adjustments that I made were um, from a size eight, I did a one inch small bust adjustment. I raised the armhole by one centimeter. I took the cuff in by a couple of centimeters and I did a bishop sleeve hack on my white version and I lengthened this version to make it more of a tunic length. I really hope you found it helpful to hear me talk you through my fitting process to show you my twirls, discuss the changes that I wanted to make and to show you how those changes were reflected in my pattern pieces. I've had some really good feedback from you guys on these fitting videos that I've been doing recently so thank you for your lovely comments. Um, I'm very happy to keep making them if you would find them helpful so I'm currently working on making the By Hand London Hannah Top which has been such a popular pattern and it's a wrapped shape and I was a bit nervous about the fitting process but it's been going I think really well so I'd be very happy to share that process with you as well when I've finished making that um, but for now thank you ever so much for watching please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my videos I'd also love to see you over on my Instagram which is lizzie underscore dot b I'll put it on the screen and down below um, and if not I'll see you here next time bye